Awesome, great job. Uh, thank you for coming. Please follow with me in the call to worship found in the bulletin, the green bulletin. Oh, give thanks to God who calls us here. We will sing in God's eyes or great speech. Oh, listen for God's wisdom that speaks to us now. We will listen for inspiration and truth. Oh, worship our God who is holy and just. We will worship God for honor and grace. Please uh, stand with me, those who are able, and as we repeat our opening prayer together. Holy One, send your word, like rain in the desert, to satisfy our thirsty souls. Nurture us and strengthen our spirits. That we may be centered on your ways and empowered by your Holy Spirit. Inspire us to live in your presence, that our actions may be just, and that our words may be true reflections of your love and grace. In your holy name we pray. 
Are there any birthdays this week? Father, we want to pray for a successful operation. We put that in your hands. We turn her body over to you and we ask you to heal her in every way. Bless her, keep her in your perfect will. Take her to Wichita and bring her back safely to us, healed, restored, renewed, reinvigorated, refreshed. Bless her in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
is that we made a trip to Burton on to break in Wednesday, and we took the birthing kits that she all put together. We had 21. So we felt we had maybe eight or ten, and the gals put them all together, and uh, we took them up there, and they were very thrilled. And I talked to one lady who had been at this year's conference, and they wanted to have 2014, 2014 kits for this year for the whole area of Kansas. They had 20 and 90. So they had 2,090 birthing kits. So, Father, we pray for all those who work for us, 
the teachers, the caregivers, the EMS, police, fire, sheriffs, all those in government, Lord, bless each and every one. All those from our president down to our local uh, governments. Father, we ask a blessing on all leaders throughout the world. Help them to see Jesus Christ. Send us from this place knowing that we have been with the Lord. These are the blessings we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy
so much. I think we can go home now. <laughs> we have to serve. Uh, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Verses 15 through 22. And it's found in the few Bibles in the New Testament section on page 28. And it's taxes to Caesar. Matthew 22, verses 15 and following. Listen to the word of God. Then the Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and care for no person, for you do not regard the position of people. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the money for the tax, and they brought him a coin. Then Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Remember therefore to Caesar, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left Jesus, and they went away. You start with me in your New Testaments again to the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, uh, which is found on page 193 of the Pew Bibles in the New Testament section, 193. The first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, uh, chapter 1. And while you're finding that, I just want to say that this is the first book of the New Testament that was written. Uh, this was a letter from Paul to the church of Thessalonica, to the Thessalonian church. And this was the very first bit of New Testament that was written. Even before the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, Paul sent this letter and it guides the canon the scriptures. So listen to the word of God as it comes from 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for you all, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brethren, beloved by God, that God has chosen you. For our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of people we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction. With joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us what a welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be filled with thy sight, the Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Uh, for this Today's uh, sermon, I want to 
Direct your attention to rendering unto God what is God. Render unto God what is God, what belongs to God. Spike Lee would put it this way. He would say, do the right thing. Do the right thing. A wise person some years ago once said, there are two inevitable events. This is old-fashioned stuff now. Two inevitable events. And those are what? Death and taxes. Yep. Well, that was before the modern era. That was before the top hundred corporations who, well, they, um, the Supreme Court has said corporations are people. And that saying, death and taxes, applied to people before the top hundred corporations who never pay a dime of taxes. One guy has trumped up a team of attorneys and legal attorneys and tax attorneys, and their job is to make sure he never pays a dime of taxes. That saying was also true before the top 1% of our society never pay a penny in taxes. The top 1% never pay taxes. They can afford all the corporate attorneys and CPAs so that they never have to pay a penny in taxes. They leave paying taxes to us the 99% of the population. And of course there's this thing about death and taxes. Well corporations never die. Every time a president gets old he passes it on to a younger president. He steps in, takes over and the corporation goes on. Some of you might remember, well no, I think it's before our time, but there was a Big corporation making buggy whips. Um, well, uh, the real McCoy and Henry Ford made sure that there was no more need or call for buggy whips. And I'm sure that corporation now does something else. Then, of course, there was uh, the Pony Express. The corporation had all these little kids, all these young men, and they would rush down to the next changing station and jump off the horse and jump on the own and keep going with the mail and of course that was superseded by the railroad, that was superseded by other corporations and I'm sure that corporation has now become the U.S. Postal Service. Well someone once said that the uh, Eiffel Tower in France and um, if you're blessed, uh, I think you should probably take a trip to France and see the Eiffel Tower. Uh, we were blessed. We were not too smart. We had little kids and we were pushing them across, I don't know, ten lanes in front of the Arc de Triomphe. Um, but it, it's, it's well worth doing it, even though I would prefer you to go to see the uh, arch in St. Louis and swing towards St. Louis and swing towards. Illinois up there, uh, go up in these bucket trains, or uh, prefer you to go to Jamaica, as uh, we were blessed uh, this week. But somebody once said the Eiffel Tower is the Empire State Building after taxes. <laughs> well, no one really likes paying taxes. Let's face it, the people of Jesus' time felt the same way about taxes as we do. Uh, they, they just flat out hated Zacchaeus and all these tax collectors. They hated the IRS at the time. Just as much as we do. But supporting our government is part of our responsibility as citizens. Let me say that again. Supporting our government is part of our responsibility as <coughs> citizens. A man in Oklahoma once put up a huge billboard. And he put this billboard up so that thousands of passengers, thousands of cars passing, that people would be able to see this billboard and it said, no taxes. 
Well, he put that billboard out alongside a federally funded interstate highway. Now, you know, I'm sure it made sense to him to say no taxes. But my friends, if we did not pay taxes, we wouldn't be able to come and worship here this morning in peace. We would have no policemen, we would have no teachers, we would have no uh, EMS, we would have no uh, soldiers, sailors, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army. The reason that we can come and elect to do what we want to do, serve and praise the living God this morning, is because we are at peace. Because we have the force that keeps our enemies out in the days of Jesus, uh, Israel didn't have a strong army. They didn't have too much taxes going on. So the Romans came in and took over. And they lived in peace, free from their enemies, the Syrians, the Syrians, the Babylonians, everyone who were attacking the Israelites ceased because of what's called the Pax Romana. That's the peace in the Roman Empire. And the way that happened is because they had to pay taxes to Caesar. You pay taxes to Caesar, their centurions like Cornelius, their, their soldiers, their band, the Roman cohort, their bands of soldiers who are there to make sure that there is peace in the community. If we did not pay taxes, there would be no U.S. Air Force. And I'm so happy when I'm sleeping peacefully at night that I know there are at least a dozen planes in the sky looking for any missiles coming in to attack us. And I know there are a dozen planes in the sky that can take out those missiles on their way in to attack us. So I'm so glad that I'm paying taxes and have a U.S. Air Force that allows me to sleep, and a U.S. Navy and a U.S. Coast Guard. And by the way, please pay your taxes. I have a son in the U.S. Coast Guard. I want him to be paid. So, you know, continue being good without your taxes. He wouldn't be paid. What a, what a guy. Anyway, there was a man, there was another man, who was an immigrant just like uh, Dorothy Bonnet. And his name was Stanley Newberg. Stanley Newberg came in as a little child, as an immigrant, with Austrian parents. Poor Austrian parents who migrated from Austria to the U.S., you know, the land of opportunity, just as we did. And uh, Stanley did well. He made some money, and when he was about to die, he wrote a will, and his estate was estimated at $5.6 million. And his wish was that they would take his entire estate of $5.6 million and give it to the U.S. government, give it to Uncle Sam. And this is what he said. He wanted to give that because for deep gratitude for the privilege of residing and living here in these United States notwithstanding many of its iniquities. My friends, the U.S. government is a human institution. It will have some human iniquities. Now, not paying taxes to the emperor in Jesus' day was an act of sedition. But they paid their taxes and they were able to live in peace. Roman taxes were paid with Roman currency. So if you have a denarius, you can work for a day, you got a denarius, the image of Caesar was on that coin. Now if you paid your taxes to the temple, if you had ten cows, you would give one to the temple if you had... Uh, any animals, you give a tithe of that to the temple. And then you would pay in Jewish money to the temple. 
But if you paid taxes, it had to be in Roman taxes for the tax Romana, which is peace throughout the Roman Empire. As members of the taxpaying society, we are required to render to Caesar what is Caesar. But on the other hand, Jesus tells us rendering to God what is God's is a voluntary act. You come this morning, you give what you want to give. It's entirely voluntary. So that puts the church at a great disadvantage. You're not going to pay Uncle Sam a dime less than you owe Uncle Sam, but for the church, you can put that off and not pay. You can pay as much as you want. There was a, there is a man by the name of George Barnum. He's a church statistician. And these are, the st these are the statistics he came up with. Among adults who regularly attend church, that is those who attend church at least once per month, 37% do not give a dime to a church in the last Year. 37% of the people sitting in the pews today do not give a dime to their church. Now, it doesn't apply here, I know. I know we know that, you know, we're here and we have fans going, we have electric lines, uh, we have heating in the, in the winter, we have cooling in the summer. We know that the church needs our finances to be able to carry on as a church. But 37% of the people, adult people in church, do not give a dime in the last year. And only 3 to 5% of the people who give, give a tithe of their income. Wouldn't it be nice if we could double that from 3 to 5 to 6 to 10 percent, church would get twice as much money and be able to do twice as much as the church does. My friends, if only we could discover that radical generosity is the secret of a blessed life. Radical generosity. God gave it to us. It's God who gave us our jobs. It's God who gives us our pensions. It's God who gives us what we have. It's God who feeds us. And wouldn't it be nice if we, at the same time, just as God was radically generous to us, we'd be radically generous, at least to the Christian society. My friends, it is, if only we could discover that radical generosity is part of what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. My friends, if only we could discover that it is more blessed to give than to receive. If only we could remember that it was Jesus Christ who gave his all. He gave all that he had to God. He gave all that he had to us. He shed his blood on a Roman cross. He gave his life that we might have life. If only we would remember his radical generosity, how generous he is to us. That's why we worship him today. That's why we're here in this pews this morning to say thank you, Jesus, for your generosity. He leads the way. He shows us. Uh, I've pastored many churches, and in almost every church, not this one, not this one, almost every church, there's someone, like a guy, a friend, a very good friend, who was president of a company, a leader of the church, says, well, I give my time for the church. I do a lot for the church, and therefore I don't have to give my money to the church. They get a lot of my time. As if my money isn't God's money. As if it isn't God who gave him the brains and the 
intelligence and the smartness to get a good degree and a good college, get a good job, rise to the top, be the president of that company, as if it wasn't God who in the first place hired him in that company, it wasn't God who said to the hire up, hire that man for this position. And I know for a fact that, let's be, let's be generous, he and his wife were working for no less than 50000 to 100000 and it's probably more than that. And he gave his time, but could not give his money. My friends, it all belongs to God. All of it. It all comes from God. It's not my brains. As a pastor, you visit people and you discover there are people, you see people who are handicapped, you see people who are in bad shape. You see people who are sick. And you realize that it is only God that has kept us and brought us to this point at this time. Jesus didn't give easy answers. You ask Jesus a question, he could answer it, yeah. It's like a man is hungry, and he, you could give him a fish. Or you could teach him how to fish. So you ask Jesus a question, he can give you the answer. I mean, he's God, he knows the answers. But he didn't do that. He used what we call the Socratic method. He gave Socrates this idea. And the Socratic method is, you ask me a question, rather than give you a plain, flat out, factual answer, I ask you another question. To get you to think about the problem you have. So they asked him a question, the Pharisees, uh, they asked him a question. What is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Well, Jesus knows our hearts. Jesus knows where they were coming from. In fact, they got together with the Herodians. Jesus had already silenced the Sadducees by now. He, they got together with the Herodians. And, the Herodians were people who carried on the tradition of Herod the Great. And there are several different sects, Pharisees, Sadducees, Scribes, Herodians, Essenes. They all had different aspects of religion. And they got together, how are we going to trap him? We're going to ask him if it's lawful to pay taxes. If he says, he can't get out of this. If he says, yes, then we'll stone him because he's a traitor to the Jews. If he says no, then we'll report him to the, to, to the Romans, and they'll crucify him. So he looks at them and says, uh, is it lawful to pay taxes? Give me a coin. What's it, whose head is on there? Oh, Caesar's. Well then, render unto Caesar's. What is Caesar's? And render unto God what is God. The Bible says they marveled at his answer and turned away and left him. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Well, Jesus had an answer. Show me a coin. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? You tell me. But at the same time, is it lawful to pay God God's time? You tell me. My friends, I encourage you to live a radically generous life. You know, you can't beat God's giving. No matter how much you give away, God has more to give to you. You have a little bucket, God has an ocean. Now you can take a bucket of water out of the ocean, and uh, you look at the ocean, it makes no difference. We have little buckets. God has a whole ocean. I encourage you to remember it's more blessed to give than to receive. I encourage you to live this radical, generous life so that God would be pleased. And remember, my friends, to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Remember to render unto God what is God. Amen. Please stand with me and repeat uh, our affirmation of Hymn 888. And we repeat all of the words together. Hymn 888.
face to shine upon me and be grateful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen. Just keep Mary in your prayers.